bassist and composer Anthony Cox with his co-authors and a composition entitled Gambray. It's in the Antilles catalog in a collection called Dark Metals. Anthony Cox, the bassist, home bases in Minneapolis, St. Paul, and uh, he and Phil Hay, the drummer, are putting together a special event on Monday from 7 to 1 a.m. to uh, recognize and honor and support Eddie Berger, the alto saxophonist. Anthony Cox, uh, you're out there somewhere in the night. Welcome into Minnesota Public Radio. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Nice to be on the air. <laughs> Anthony, uh, I know you've uh, probably been traveling a great deal, but before we get to that, uh, this composition is a fascinating uh, collaboration between and among uh, Dewey Redman, Billy Higgins, and yourself. You might uh, give us a little background on it. Sure. Um, first of all, what influenced me for using uh, that cast of people was that, uh, for one thing, um, ten years ago, Billy Higgins made an album called uh, Soweto on the Red Records label. And it featured Billy doing vocals and playing guitar and also playing uh, with that instrument that you just heard, which is uh, an, Af an African string instrument called the gambre. So what I was, what I wanted to do was I wanted to um, feature a side of Billy that nobody ever heard and wasn't aware of, and I wanted to also feature, basically, and that's the other reason I called the the album Dark Metals is because I had in mind the sound and the timbre of uh, Dewey Redmond's saxophone and the overall texture of the album. So this piece, Gambre, was basically. Um, a piece where I told Billy, okay, you know, just do your stuff. Because um, on this album, you know, dealing with, these are like some highly creative people, and I, I wanted to take advantage of that situation. So a lot of the pieces uh, are totally improvised. There's uh, about four, four or five that are, that are composed, as, meaning, you know, written out. But I really wanted to take advantage of that because... Uh, there were so many spontaneous things that happened that were just beautiful, and they happened in, like, one take. Which is uh, the uh, magic of this kind of uh, medium, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. And I, you know, um, it was a lot of fun. The whole session was, like, just, I, I mean, you know, I've never been in a session where everybody was just so up and uh, just wanted to work. They were really happy. So, as you see, that was a result of it. And uh, what happened there was I told, like I said before, I told Billy, I said, you know, let's, let's, try, let's try this. And because uh, he brought his guitar and, he, uh, and, the, and the gombre. And uh, we just sat down and started to play together and kept the tape running. Anthony Cox, uh, you started out in this territory and you've been traveling the world ever since. Uh, of a recent time, uh, what new projects and where have you been? Just bring us uh, up to date on your career. Well, let's see. If I go back maybe about eight months, uh, I did a project with uh, tenor saxophonist Gary Thomas and um, guitarist Pat Matheny, and uh, we did an album called uh, Standards Volume 2, uh, which is it's Gary Thomas's album. And then I went on the road with with a, I guess you might call him a music director, it was a guy named Kip Hanrahan, and the name of the group was Conjure, and Conjure included poet Ishmael Reed, Jack Bruce, uh, Leo Nocentelli, who was the guitarist for the Meters, the, the band, the Meters, and then, let's see, uh, Don Pullen, um, uh, J.T. Lewis, you know, just a cast of characters, and then, um, we Formidable did. group. Yeah. <laughs> we were uh, on tour in Europe, and that was about uh, about three weeks. And then after that, I went out with, um, playing with vibraphonist and drummer, uh, vibraphonist David Friedman and drummer Jerry Grinelli, and we did a project uh, in Canada and also in Europe. Then I went out with uh, Joe Lovano and Tom Harrell, and Jeff Williams, and we did a, a tour playing a lot of music from Joe's new album uh, on Blue Note. I can't remember the name of the album all of a sudden, but anyway, we did that. And then uh, 
I finished, uh, uh, I went with uh, Jerry Grinelli and David Friedman again, and uh, we did a tour of Europe, primarily Germany, and did a recording that'll come out uh, probably in the spring. And basically now I'm getting ready to do my uh, second album, which will be with uh, Ralph Peterson on drums, uh, Mike Kane, and a tenor player that's better well known in the Latin community. His name is uh, Roberto or Robert Francestini, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna start recording in December. In the meantime, I'm just uh, writing, and I have some other projects I'm going to be doing in about uh, oh three weeks. Most of my work right now, I'm traveling a lot in uh, Europe and Japan. And you home base here. Do you yeah. find do you find uh, living in the Midwest and uh, your home area uh, an advantage now? Yeah, very much an advantage. I think um, for one, um, I always wanted to move back. Um, New York, I got tired of real quick. Uh, I lived in New York for about six years, New York City, and then I moved upstate New York, which was a nice change. But I find that there's a lot of reasons. One, um, I just like the pace of Minneapolis, St. Paul. I like the. I have a lot of old friends back here. Uh, I'm also kind of in a strategically kind of in the middle, so it's it's easy for me to travel and. Uh, it's just a much more, I'd say, calmer existence, <laughs> you know, at this point. Well, that's good to hear. Yeah, I love it. Good way uh, for an artist to recharge batteries. Yeah. Anthony Cox, I know you have a lot of old friends here, and among them is Eddie Berger, the alto saxophonist, and Monday night is most important. Uh, the entire community is being rallied by you and Phil Hay, and uh, we plan to meet you on stage at 7 o'clock um, and broadcaster Barbara Hackett, broadcaster educator, and a grand array of musicians. And you might just uh, give us some of the billings for Monday night at 7. Yes. Uh, starting out, we're going to have a group with uh, Bobby Peterson and Jay Epstein, Keith Boyle. Um, you have to excuse me. There's so many people, um, but I'll just briefly go over. There'll be basically four groups. Then uh, there'll be the Bertie Amstrom, Adi Shine Big Band with uh, Debbie Duncan. Uh, and that will feature a host of well-known Minneapolis musicians, such as uh, you know Dave Graff, Dave Carr. And then uh, a group, which we basically kind of call ourselves the workshop, uh, with Scott Fultz, Dean McGraw, myself, and Phil Hay. Uh, we're going to perform, and uh, it's going to feature a lot of uh, original compositions by myself and, well, actually everybody in the band. And then finally, um, we will have uh, Michael Romstead, Tom Lewis, uh, and Ed Berger, uh, hopefully, if he feels up to it. We uh, kind of top the evening off. Well, it sounds like a... Uh, a great gathering, and uh, I promise to meet you Monday night uh, around 7 o'clock at the Dakota Bar and Grill in Bandana Square. And I appreciate so much uh, you taking time to talk with us on the line, and it's good to renew Anthony Cox and uh, that uh, sampling of Gombre from Dark Metals in the Antilles catalog was a wonderful taste. Thanks again, and good night to you. Okay, thank you, Lee. Good night, Anthony. Good night.